Hello everyone, my name is Vladimir Nikolic and I will be presenting BTLib, which is a C++ library with Python interface for efficient sequence processing. So for background, a lot of code in bioinformatics is not ideal and it is a self-perpetuating problem as low quality code cannot really be reused and so a bioinformatician might need to make their own implementation of an algorithm or a data structure for a project or a manuscript and this again might not be high quality. Now the solution to this problem, or one of the solutions, is a well-designed and documented library such as CCAN. This is a C++ library which implements algorithms and data structures that are commonly used in bioinformatics. Um, not everybody is proficient in C++, so somebody might want to use Python, and there we have BioPython, which is a set of modules uh, with, implement again, implementations of commonly used algorithms. Uh, in this poster, we present the BTLib library from the Bioinformatics Technology Lab as an addition to this ecosystem. And the goal of BTLib is specifically efficient and scalable implementations of bioinformatics algorithms and data structures. It's a library in C++, uh, but it does have Python bindings as well. So first of all, in BTLib, we have Antihash, first introduced by uh, Hamid Mohammadi which is a very efficient DNA or RNA rolling hash function and is about an order of magnitude faster than the best performing alternatives. Uh, the implementation also includes space seed functionality, so you're able to ignore mismatches when you hash sequences. Then we have a bloom filter, which is a data structure where you can insert and query elements, uh, most likely sequences. It is thread safe, so you can have multiple threads inserting into it, and it allows the insertion of, our, of an array of hash values per element. So you can combine it with anti-hash, so you can hash your k-mers and then you insert them into, the, into a bloom filter. And they also allow saving to disk with the associated metadata, such as bloom filter size, or uh, hashing function used, or maybe even k-mer size. Then we have a counting bloom filter, now, counting bloom filter, as the name implies, counts the number of times you've inserted an element. Um, unlike a bloom filter, it is not fully thread safe, but instead it minimizes the effects of race conditions in a multi-thread environment, which means that the actual counts found in a counting bloom filter will be slightly different from the ground truth, but it is designed such that the differences will be minimal. And again, you can also save it to metadata, uh, to disk with the associated metadata. Uh, then we have multi-index bloom filter introduced by Justin Chu. Uh, and it is a bloom filter data structure that associates integer indices with inserted elements. So you might associate an index with each of your sequences, um, which can be used for classification. And like, like the counting bloom filter, the race conditions are minimized instead of um, fully avoided and the, the reason for this is because a fully uh, thread safe implementation would be slow. Then we have IndexLR which is um, a tool for calculating minimizers given sequences and so for a given sequence file let's say it produces um, all the minimizers and optionally outputs the corresponding minimizer sequence, its length, position, and strand. And this is all useful information if you're making, let's say, a scaffolder. You wanna know where the minimizers are coming from so you can join contexts into scaffolds. Then we have sequence IO uh, for reading and writing sequences uh, from and to disk. So they are very uh, flexible uh, ways to do that. So Secreter, for example, is capable of reading different formats such as FASTA, FASTQ, including multiline and SAM format. And it can also do compression and decompression. Um, and it is also thread safe. So there is a dedicated thread that reads from the disk and uh, writes the sequences into a buffer and then your threads can read from this buffer and receive a copy of each sequence for its own processing. Um, then we have utility functions for common tasks such as reverse complementation, manipulating sequences, and perhaps logging. So here we have a plot which demonstrates one aspect of uh, scalability in BTLib. So as I mentioned before about counting bloom filters, we minimize the discrepancy between ground truth and the actual counts in the counters. So on the y-axis you have the average counter difference between 
ground truth and what is actually found in a counting bloom filter. And this is for a 10 gigabyte counting bloom filter um, uh, where uh, 250,000 reads were inserted with different number of threads. As you can see, even as we increase the number of threads, <clears throat> the average counter difference is not that large. Uh, this is another plot that shows scalability. So we here show that Secreter uh, scales very well with the number of threads. So here we load 250,000 long reads from disk and we do a simulated workload of 5 milliseconds per read. And as we increase the number of threads, Secreter scales very well and the uh, uh, runtime decreases. Whereas for a critical section implementation with KSeq, now critical section uh, allows only one thread to read at a time and KSeq is an efficient implementation of uh, sequence IO. We see that at one point it plateaus and even slows down as you increase the number of threads. So in conclusion, uh, the goal of BTLib is not to compete, it's to add, uh, to complement the available libraries um, for bioinformatics. Um, and what sets it apart uh, from the other libraries is that it's specialized for algorithms um, with efficiency and scalability in mind. You can obtain BTLib most easily from the Conda package manager. I would like to acknowledge the funding for this project, um, specifically Genome Canada, Genome British Columbia, National Institutes of Health, and NSERC. Thank you for listening. <laughs>